Hello, my name's Mike Rash. Today we'll be doing a pre-trip inspection on a truck trailer. For the pre-trip inspection, you must name each item, point to or touch the item, fully explain what you're inspecting the item for. The test is divided up into sections. There's Form A, which is the front of the vehicle, engine compartment, steering components, and front driver's side axle. Form B, which is from the driver door to the rear of the vehicle, the coupling system, and then we'll inspect the driver side of the trailer, and then we'll do our in-cab inspection and engine start. When you come to do your pre-trip inspection, you may draw a section of the vehicle to inspect, form A, B, or C, but everybody will inspect the coupling system, everybody will do the in-cab inspection and engine start. We'll start with form A. Form A, which will be the front of the vehicle, engine compartment, steering components, and front driver side axle. Anything unique on this side of the motor, we will have to inspect that. We'll start with our lights. Lights should be securely mounted. Proper color amber in the front of the vehicle. Headlights should be clear, clean, securely mounted, not cracked. Also check underneath our vehicle for leaks. Make sure there are no leaks underneath our vehicle. We'll go on and inspect the engine compartment. We'll start with the oil. Pull the dipstick out. Make sure it's between that and full. Check my coolant level. Make sure it's sufficient for operation between minimum and maximum. Check our power steering fluid. Make sure it's between that and full. Follow my power steering hose to the power steering pump. I must say it's gear driven. Securely mounted, not leaking working properly and not damaged. Also would check my air compressor. Must say that it's gear driven. It's securely mounted to the engine. Hoses are secure. It's not leaking. Working properly and no damage. Also check the washer fluid. Make sure I have fluid in, in my washer fluid. Check this side of the motor. Check all my hoses. Not kinked or swollen. All my clamps are tight and not leaking. Also check this side of the motor for any leaks. We'll go over to the other side of the motor, inspect the alternator. Must be securely mounted, wires are secure on the back of the alternator. Also have to say it's belt driven. Belt should be between half inch to three quarter inch of tension on the belt, not split or cut. And check the water pump. Make sure the water pump is securely mounted, not leaking. Must say it's belt driven. Belt's not cracked or frayed. Tension should be between half inch to three quarter inch of tension. Check this side of the motor. Check all my hoses. Make sure they're not split or cut. Make sure all my clamps are tight, not leaking. Also check this side of the motor for any excessive oil leaks or any fluid leaks. Go back to the other side of the vehicle and check our steering components. We'll check our steering box. Should be securely mounted, not leaking. No missing nuts or bolts. Check our steering hoses. Should not be split or cut, not leaking. Fittings are secure. Also check my steering linkage. It's not bent or cracked. No missing nuts or bolts. They're all secure. Carter pins are in place. Sockets are not worn or loose. We'll check our steering linkage from our steering wheel all the way to our steering box and from our steering box all the way to our axle. We'll check our front axle. We'll start with our leaf springs. They're not broken. They're not cracked. None missing. They're all in alignment. We'll go on to our U-bolts. They're securely mounted. Nuts are tight. They're not broken or missing. Our spring mounts, they should be securely mounted, not cracked. Bushings are not missing or torn. Also have to check the front spring mount. Check our shock absorber. Make sure it's securely mounted. It's not leaking. We'll go on to our brake parts. Check our airline. Fitting should be secure. Hose should not be split or cut, cracked or swollen. Check our brake chamber. It should be securely mounted. It's not cracked or dented or leaking. Also have to check the clamp on the brake chamber. It should be secure, tight, and in place. We'll check our push rod. It's not bent or broke. Should not move more than one inch when you apply the foot brake. 
Also check our slack adjuster. Pins in place holding the slack adjuster to the push rod. Slack adjuster is not bent or broke. Check our brake drum. It should be securely mounted. No holes, no cracks. Should be smooth. No signs of grease or oil on my drums. Then check our brake linings. Pad should be sufficient, more than a quarter inch. Also no signs of grease or oil on my brake pads. We'll go on to our front wheel. Inspect our tire. Should have minimum 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth. No cuts or bubbles on the sidewall. Tread should be evenly worn, no flat spots. Check our valve stem. Should not be missing, broken, twisted, secured with a cap. Check my tire pressure with an air gauge. Inspect our rim. Should not be cracked or bent. No rust trails indicating a loose rim. No aftermarket welds on the rim. Check our lug nuts to ensure none are missing. Not loose. Looking for rust trails. No cracks or distorted lug nut holes. Check my axle seal. Make sure it's not leaking. If it had a sight glass, I would check the fluid level. Make sure it had the proper fluid level. From here, we'll go on and do form B. do form B, which will be from the driver door to the rear of the vehicle. Items include the underside of the vehicle and the rear driver side axle. Anything unique on the other side of the vehicle, we will need to inspect those items. Start with the door. Door should have no holes in it. Fits good to the cab. Should open and close. My seal is not ripped or torn. Should be intact. Also, the hinges are secure. Bolts are tied on my hinges. We'll inspect my mirror. Should be securely mounted. Brackets not damaged. Should be secure and tight. Mirror should be clean, not broken or cracked. Check my steps. Should be clean. Steps should be securely mounted. Not broken, no fluid or debris on my steps. Check any lights that I have on the side of my vehicle. Front should be amber in color, securely mounted. Not cracked. Should also be clean. Check my DOT reflective tape, should be securely mounted, 
not peeling or cracked. Red lights on the back of my vehicle should be securely mounted, clean, not cracked. We'll then inspect the underside of the vehicle. We'll start with our exhaust system. Must check it from where it leaves the engine or the turbo to the tailpipe. It should be securely mounted, no signs of soot. Any of the piping or clamps should be tight. No holes in the exhaust, no severe dents or damage. We would check that from the engine all the way to our tailpipe. If we had any emission devices, we would check those the same way as we checked our exhaust. We'll inspect our frame. All my bolts should be secure. Frame should be straight, no cracks. Also check my cross members. They should also be secure, straight, no cracks in my cross members. And we'll check our floor, make sure there's no holes. We would check our drive shaft. All my bolts should be tight on my drive shaft. It should be straight with no cracks. My U-joints, all my bolts should be tight and free of any foreign object in my U-joints. From here we'll go to the rear axle. I'll check my leaf springs. None are broken, not cracked, none are missing, all in alignment. Check my torque arm. Make sure it's securely mounted, not cracked, straight, and the bushings are not worn, thin, or missing. Check our U-bolts. They should be securely mounted. Nuts are tight, not broken or missing. The spring mounts. Check the front and the rear spring mount. They should be securely mounted, not cracked, any bushings not torn or missing. We'll go on and check our brake parts. Brake hoses should not be cut, cracked, or swollen. Fittings should be secure and not leaking. Check my brake chamber. Should be securely mounted, not cracked, dented, or leaking. Clamp on the brake chamber. Make sure my clamp is in place. Check a push rod. Comes out of the back of the brake chamber. Should not have more than one inch of travel when I apply my foot brake. Not bent or broke. Check my slack adjuster. Pin is in place, holding the slack adjuster to the push rod. Should be securely mounted, not cracked. Check my brake drums. Should be securely mounted. No holes, smooth, not cracked. Should have no grease or oil. Brake pads. Should be sufficient, at least a quarter of an inch. No grease or oil on my brake pads. And we'll go to the wheel. I'll check that rear tire should have minimum 230 seconds of tread depth. No splits or cuts on the sidewalls. Tread evenly worn with no flat spots. Check my valve stem. Make sure it's not missing. Twisted. Also has a cap. Check the tire pressure with an air gauge. Check my rim. No cracks on our rim. Should not be bent. No rust trails indicating loose lug nuts. No aftermarket welds on my rim. Check our lug nuts. None are missing. Not loose. No distorted lug nut holes. No rust trails indicating loose lug nuts. Check the axle seal. Make sure the axle seal is not leaking. If it had a sight glass, I would check fluid level. This one does not have a sight glass. I check in between my tires. Make sure the tires are evenly spaced. No gap in between the rims. They should be flush together. No debris in between my tires. We'll now check the rear of the vehicle. Check our mud flaps. Make sure they're securely mounted. Not ripped or torn. Check our rear lights. Should be red in color on the rear of our vehicle. They're not cracked. Should be securely mounted. Clean. Check all my lights on the rear of the vehicle. Check my DOT reflective tape. Should be clean, not ripped or torn. Securely mounted. We have a unique item on the passenger side of our vehicle, our fuel tank. Strap should be secure. Cap should be on tight. I have to check my fuel tank and my cap for leaks. Truck is not equipped with DEF, but if I had a DEF tank, I would check it the same as my tank. Securely mounted, not leaking. That concludes Form B.
we'll inspect the coupling system of our truck and trailer. We have a pinnel hitch coupling system. We'll start with our electric line. Should be secure into the truck. Latch is in place. I'll inspect the line itself. Shouldn't be kinked or swollen. Should not be rubbing. Should not be mended. We have to check the connection into the trailer. This goes in the piping and the connection is actually underneath the trailer frame. But we do need to inspect that. We'll inspect our air lines. My fittings should be secure into the truck. My rubber grommets should not be missing, torn or leaking. Fittings going in should not be leaking, should be secure. Airline shouldn't be kinked or swollen or leaking, should not be rubbing. I would check my fittings going into my trailer. They should all be secure, tight, not leaking. I would inspect my mounting bolts. Should not be missing, should be tight, not cracked or broken. Would inspect my panel hook. Should not be cracked or broken. Should not be worn thin. Check my latch. Bolt secure. My safety pin is in place. Check my panel ring. Should not be cracked or broken. Should not be worn thin. Then I check my mounting bolts. They should be tight, not missing, not broken. I would inspect my safety chains. They should be hooked outward. My chains should not be cracked or broken. They should be crisscrossed. They should be secure at the trailer. Form C, which is our driver's side of our trailer, do our landing gear. Landing gear should not be bent or broke, should be securely mounted. Welds or bolts, whatever you have, should be secure. Landing gear should be all the way up. Pad should not be bent or broken. Crank handle should be secure and in place. We have reflective tape on the side of our trailer, should be clean, securely mounted. Got our light on the front of our trailer, should be amber in color clean, not cracked or missing. Amber light on the side of our trailer should be clean, not cracked or missing. Red light on the rear of our trailer should be clean, not cracked or missing. And another red clearance light on the rear of our trailer. Red in color, clean, not cracked or missing. And we have our ABS light. Should be amber in color, clean, not cracked or missing. We'll check our tie downs. They should be securely mounted, not cracked or broken. Check those down the side of our trailer. We'll inspect the underside of our trailer. We'll check our trailer frame. Should be straight, no cracks, it's not twisted. Cross members are secure, not cracked or twisted, welded in place. If they're bolted in place, check your bolts. None missing, all tight. These are welded. Our floor of our trailer should not have any holes in the floor of our trailer. From here we'll go to the rear axle. I'll check my leaf springs. None are broken, not cracked, none are missing, all in alignment. Check our U-bolts, they should be securely mounted. Nuts are tight, not broken or missing. The spring mounts, check the front and the rear spring mount. They should be securely mounted, not cracked, any bushings not torn or missing. We'll go on and check our brake parts. Brake hoses should not be cut, cracked, or swollen. 
fitting should be secure and not leaking. Check my brake chamber. Should be securely mounted, not cracked, dented, or leaking. Clamp on the brake chamber. Make sure my clamp is in place. Check your push rod. Comes out of the back of the brake chamber. Should not have more than one inch of travel when I apply my foot brake. Not bent or broke. Check my slack adjuster. Pin is in place, holding the slack adjuster to the push rod. Should be securely mounted, not cracked. Check my brake drums. Should be securely mounted. No holes, smooth, not cracked. Should have no grease or oil. Brake pads. Should be sufficient, at least a quarter of an inch. No grease or oil on my brake pads. And we'll go to the wheel. I'll check the rear tire. Should have minimum 230 seconds of tread depth. No splits or cuts on the sidewalls. Tread evenly worn with no flat spots. Check my valve stem. Make sure it's not missing. Twisted. Also has a cap. Check the tire pressure with an air gauge. Check my rim. No cracks on our rim. Should not be bent. No rust trails indicating loose lug nuts. No aftermarket welds on my rim. Check our lug nuts. None are missing. Not loose. No distorted lug nut holes. No rust trails indicating loose lug nuts. Check the axle seal. Make sure the axle seal is not leaking. If it had a sight glass, I would check fluid level. This one doesn't have a sight glass. I check in between my tires. Make sure the tires are evenly spaced. No gap in between the rims. They should be flush together. No debris in between my tires. Inspect the rear of our trailer. We have our lights. Should be red in color. Clean, not cracked or missing. We have our brake lights, turn signals, four ways. And our clearance lights. We have reflective tape. Should be clean, secure. And that will conclude. Form C from here. We'll do the in cab inspection and engine start.
Now we'll do our in-cab inspection. Everything in the cab you have to demonstrate. We'll also do our air brake check, which is pass-fail on the test. You have to do that exactly correct or else it's automatic fail on your pre-trip inspection. We'll start with our safety equipment. We should have a fire extinguisher, should be mounted, fully charged, three red reflective triangles, and spare fuses. Uh, after we check our emergency equipment, we'll check our seat belt. Should be securely mounted at the top and bottom, securely mounted to the floor. Seat belt should have no rips or cuts, shouldn't be torn. Should latch and unlatch. and should fit properly. From here we'll do a safe start. I'll turn my key on. Make sure my ABS light goes on and off. If I had a DEF light, it should also go on and off. Make sure the system's operating properly. Push in the clutch. Make sure my shifter's in neutral. Start our motor. First thing I want to check is my oil pressure. Needles should rise, operate in the safe range. Check my water temperature. Make sure my needle moves, operates in the safe range. My voltmeter. Needle should operate in the safe range. Our air pressure should rise. The governor cut off, which is approximately 120, 130 pounds, whatever the manufacturer sets the governor cut off at. I'll check my lighting indicators. Left turn signal should operate. Right turn signal should operate. Four ways. Both lights should operate. I'll turn my lights on, check that my high beam indicator works properly. Check my heater. Make sure it blows out of the bottom. Check my defroster. Make sure that it blows out of the top. Check my horn, got my electric horn, got my air horn. Check my windshield, should be clean, no cracks, no stickers to obstruct my view. Check my mirrors, they should be adjusted properly so I can see down the sides of my vehicles. Check my windshield wipers. My arms should not be bent or broke, securely mounted. My blades should not be ripped or torn. You have to turn those on, make sure they operate. The fluid squirts on my windshield. Next we're going to check our braking system, which consists of the parking brakes, the service brake, and then the air brake check. There must be a governor cutoff before we do our brake check. Things just purge to where governor cut off. We'll check our braking system, which is our parking brakes, our service brake, and then our air brake check. We'll first check our parking brake. We'll check our truck parking brakes by releasing the trailer parking brake. Then we'll put it in low gear. We'll let out on the clutch just till our engine lugs so that we can feel our truck parking brake holding. We'll then check our trailer parking brake by applying the trailer parking brake and releasing the truck parking brake. We'll put it in low gear at our engine lug and we can feel our trailer parking brake working properly. Now we'll check our service brake. Our service brake is our foot pedal. What we'll do is we'll put it in gear, move forward approximately five mile an hour, and apply our service brake. When we apply our service brake, our wheels should not pull left or right. We'll put that in gear. 
forward five mile an hour. Hit our brake. Our wheel did not pull left or right. And we have a good pedal. We'll now do our air brake check. Air brake check checks three things. Checks for air leaks. Checks our low air warning device. And also checks to make sure that our brakes close when we get low on air pressure. Must be a governor cutoff when we start our air brake check. We're going to roll our window down. Part of the air brake check says we must listen for leaks. We'll have our window down for that. Our tanks just purged, that means our air tanks are full, so we'll start our air brake check. First thing we'll do, we'll shut our motor off. We'll turn our key to the on position so our gauges will work. We'll release the parking brakes and apply the service brake and let our gauge settle. Once our gauge settles, we're going to check for air leaks. We'll time it for one minute, watch our gauge. We cannot lose more than four pounds of air pressure in one minute. We have our window down, so we're also listening for air leaks. We must hold it the full minute. There's our minute. We did not lose more than four pounds on our air gauge. Also did not hear any leaks. After we check for the air leaks, second part of the air brake check checks your low air warning device. Low air warning device activates when you get low on air pressure. We'll pump our brake pedal, or fan our brake pedal, before 55 pounds, our low air warning device should activate, warning us that we're low on air pressure and that we would have to exit the road, find a safe place to exit the road. Third part of the air brake check checks to make sure that our parking brakes pop out when our spring brakes close. That should happen approximately 40 pounds. Our tractor brake popped out. There's our truck brake popped out. That concludes the air brake check. That concludes our in-cab inspection and engine start. Concludes the truck trailer video. And I hope this video helps you with your pre-trip inspection. Thank uh -huh.